All right, hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna cover kind of some, well, I guess it's all just Johnny Lightning and uh, Hot Wheels, but um, just kind of some movie themed cars, really just uh, back to the future stuff, honestly. I've got two different uh, DeLoreans here, uh, Biff's Ford Super Deluxe. I finally found this. I've actually been looking for this everywhere, the one with the, the manure on it. Uh, we've got the Monsters Dragula and another uh, Johnny Lightning pop culture James Bond car. We have seen a couple James Bond cars before, including the uh, AMC Hornet and the Ford Country Squire. Uh, I've unboxed those in previous videos, so um, I do like the James Bond stuff, so we'll take a quick look at that. It is a very nice uh, 65 Ford Mustang. Nice blue there. Um, like I said, we have the Munsters uh, Dragula, so uh, a couple different origins for this car, but the one I read, um, uh, I remember the Munsters show, but I actually I had to look this car up, but um, what is it? Herman Munster loses the Munsters coach in a, a drag race, so the, the grandfather builds this to win it back, but this is a pretty cool car. It's actually like a, a coffin for a body with, well, we'll check it out a little better when we open it up but that, I thought that was pretty cool um, next like I said Biff's Ford Super Deluxe from Back to the Future 1 when he spins it into the back of the manure truck and it gets filled full of manure and then we actually have <clears throat> excuse me three DeLoreans here so right here this was uh, in a very early video on my channel this is the DeLorean this is a Hot Wheels premium I believe um, uh, just says Mattel. It doesn't say Hot Wheels or anything on the base, but I'm like 99% sure this is a Hot Wheels. Um, this is the one from the first movie, as you can tell by the uh, the lack of Mr. Fusion device. We'll take a look at that when the uh, this guy's out of the box, but I thought this was pretty cool. So we have the one from the first movie here, and then if you want to get technical, I believe this is still considered the one from the end of the first movie, even though it has the Mr. Fusion on it that was on the car for the entirety of the second movie. Um, this scene is the first movie, and it says, obviously, Back to the Future, not Back to the Future Part 2. But this is the car that was in the second movie. And then lastly down here that I thought this was pretty cool, I've actually been sitting on this for quite a while. Um, Back to the Future Time Machine, 1955. Um, no, this is the one from 1885 when they go, this is part three, when they go back to the, uh, the cowboy times, you can see the wheels on it are the wheels that they use to push it with the train in the end of the movie. If you remember that scene and the whole, all the different, uh, modifications that were made to make the car operate in, uh, the 1800s. So being that we have one DeLorean already out of the box, um, Let's, uh, yeah, let's start with the DeLoreans. So we'll get number one and two and three. And real quick, I just want to talk about this. So I actually had a, uh, I believe it was this exact casting from Johnny Lightning um, when I was a very little kid, but I don't believe that it survived my childhood too well. I specifically remember the, uh, the Mr. Fusion on the back there. As you can see, I remember that got broken off pretty early on in my ownership of that DeLorean. So let's get that one out of the box, and we'll open up the uh, the one from the third movie as well. We'll move this stuff over. Ooh. All right, guys. Very cool stuff. Um, so if you'll notice, the Johnny Lightning is a little bit it's scaled a little differently. There's some detail on this one that's better than this one. There's detail on this one that's better than that one, this, that, and the third. Um, this one has mirrors. If you'll notice, neither of the Hot Wheels have mirrors. Um, but for the most part, they're, they're relatively consistent across the, um, across the board here. So real quick, I'm going to move this guy and this guy we're just going to look very quickly at the first movie car because like i said i did over uh look this car over in a previous video uh quite a while ago actually though so it doesn't hurt to give it a second look but as you can see in the back there there's no mr fusion or anything like that 
There's the out of time license plate, California plate there. Um, so this is the car that Marty originally went back to 1955 in, in the first movie. Um, so very, very cool looking car. DeLoreans were not that cool in real life. Um, they were kind of junk. They had like crappy V6s in them. They weren't necessarily muscle cars or hot rods or anything. They were by no means fast. But um, <laughs> the Back to the Future really did a great job of convincing us that it was a, a fast car and a cool car that sounded neat. I mean, the doors were cool for sure, but that was about the only cool thing about these cars. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the Johnny Lightning variation of the second movie car. Now, this is a very, very cool one. Um, again, DeLorean Motor Company on the grill there. Some very nice detail in the headlights. Looks a little bit better than the Hot Wheels, if I, if I do say so myself. Um, not to say that the Hot Wheels looks bad, but honestly, the Johnny Lightning really nailed the front end of that car. That looks, there we go, now you can see it. That looks fantastic. Very nice. Um, like I said, though, I did have this very same Johnny Lightning as a kid, but like I said, it probably didn't survive all too well. I specifically remember I had a habit, you can see we have a flat tire here. I had a habit of folding the tires up like that kind of, so that it looked like the, uh, how the wheels folded up on the DeLorean in the movie. I was very little, so I didn't really know what I had or what I was doing with it, but I was able to track one of these DeLoreans down on eBay and get my hands on it. Very, very cool car. So this one, obviously, uh, well, it looks like the license plate's not there, but if you remember in the second movie, it had kind of just that barcode license plate. It was like orange and chrome. So I imagine, you know, be, use your imagination, pretend it's there. Um, some detail, colored detail on the sides there. Mr. Fusion on the back here. Looks a little, a little big proportionally to the car. We also did get this cool little card with it as well with a little scene from the movie. This is from the... First Back to the Future movie, if you remember, Doc originally had the uh, the DeLorean hooked up to remote control when he first tested it. Him and Marty went to the, uh, the Twin Pines Mall parking lot and sent Einstein the dog back in time in the time machine first via, via remote control before the Libyans showed up. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Back to the Future. It's one of my favorite movie series. Um... So I'm very excited to have a DeLorean from each movie, this being the second movie there. And now we will take a look at the other Hot Wheels, this one being from the third movie. Um, now, like I said, some detail that was on the old one is missing on this one, but there's some detail on this one that I really do appreciate, and that being the fact that we can actually almost read, well, you guys can almost read, I can read it. Uh, Mr. Fusion there on the Mr. Fusion. Um, not exactly sure what happened to all the stuff in the back here, why it's all black. Uh, I might have to go back and rewatch the movie. There's the license plate that I was talking about, the orange and chrome barcode license plate. So that was obviously still on the car from the second movie when it was... Uh, Oh, let's see what happened. In the second movie, they went back to 1955. They went to the future and then back to the past. And, uh, right, and then the car got struck by lightning and sent back 100 years to the 1800s. And that was this car. This was the one that got sent back by the lightning. I'm not going to sit here and go over what happened in the whole movie. You're just going to have to watch it. But <laughs> very, very cool to see uh, all three of the different versions of the DeLorean as it progressed through the uh, the movie series. And of course, if you, you uh, the wheels on here were the, uh, the wheels that they used to push it along the train tracks in the end of the movie, so that's pretty cool. I actually thought it was pretty funny. So if you look at a Hot Wheels Premium, so this is the like a Hot Wheels Premium, Back to the Future, DeLorean Time Machine. We got metal on metal. Uh, it does not say 
real riders because obviously it doesn't have rubber tires on it. <laughs> so I thought it was very funny that Hot Wheels took uh, some attention to that detail there. So next up, we are going to open up and get that lift there. Get our DeLoreans parked up somewhere where they won't get bumped. Right there looks good. Next up, we'll keep with the uh, the Back to the Future theme here before we get into our other Johnny Lightning pop culture stuff. And uh, let's get Biff's shit-covered Super Deluxe out of the box. Um, I would very much like to know if the shit comes off. It looks removable, and it would be really cool to have a Ford Super Deluxe without manure on it. But uh, either way, I think I might display it with the manure on it just because it's a Ford. So... <laughs> Let's get it out of the box here. Uh, so yes, as I suspected, the manure is removable, fortunately. Um, absolutely beautiful car overall without the manure on it. I absolutely love this thing. Red interior is very nice. Um, if you remember, Biff was very fond of this car in the movies. Um, I think it actually got covered in manure twice, if you uh, watch all three movies. But... Um, yeah, absolutely stunning looking car. Great detail on there. Headlight detail, turn signals, front license plate. Looks like uh, GH96472. I'd have to go watch the movie and make sure that's accurate. I'm not 100% sure about those wheels. Though they, they do look great. They look kind of like uh, Camaro rally wheels. Um, I'm not sure if those are completely anatomically correct. That steering wheel looks kind of hokey. <laughs> uh, but either way, very, very nice car. I could... Very nice addition to the collection. I absolutely love this style of car, like the uh, the big rolling fenders of the uh, late 40s. Or this would this be like more early 40s? I forget what year this car was in the uh, in the movie. But um, yes, as we know, we have our manure piece here. That fits onto the car just like so <laughs> and it does it's it's like perfectly cut to be able to kind of clip on I think that is just the most like childishly hilarious thing that Hot Wheels could have ever done with this car from this movie um, if I'm not mistaken yeah the car does end up getting covered in manure twice so I guess if, after the second time they're like ah, oh, you know we could add on a, a clip-on pile of shit for the car. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. I love it. <laughs> it's kind of gross, honestly. <laughs> like, ew. <laughs> so there is with the manure, and we'll do one more rotation without the manure. Very beautiful car. Very nice stuff. So there is actually one more uh, Hot Wheels Back to the Future themed vehicle out there that I would like to get my hands on that I actually don't even know if I would open if I did get my hands on it. And it's uh, it's Marty's uh, Toyota pickup truck from the end of the movie when he uh, races, what's his name, Needles, that whole nonsense. He, uh, he has a Toyota pickup truck, a little black... One with the uh, the KC light bar on it, and it's just like the coolest truck ever. And Hot Wheels has released a variation of it, but I have not been able to get my hands on it. I haven't seen it in stores anywhere, and it's going for super expensive online because it is a very cool truck. So if I get my hands on that, we will take a look at it. But until then, it's looking like this is going to be my little Back to the Future collection here. Um, so next up, let's get our, let's do the James Bond Mustang. We'll save the Monsters Dragula for last, but, uh, we've got our 65 Ford Mustang here. Sean Connery, he was the best James Bond. Um, although I do really like Daniel Craig and some of the other James Bonds have been pretty good, but Sean Connery will always be the best James Bond. And, uh, I'd say Daniel Craig is like a close, close second. 
I really do like Daniel Craig's stuff, but a uh, very cool car, so we'll get this out of the box here. All right, so here is our 65 Ford Mustang. First thing I noticed about this thing, and we'll see if we can get a very close look here. Um, the soft top is actually like textured like a soft top, like like you'd expect a, a piece of canvas to be. So if I take my little, let's see if we can hear it. You hear it's not like perfectly smooth. It's got some texture that actually makes it look like canvas. So I thought that was pretty impressive. I, first time I've seen something like that from Johnny Lightning. Usually you just expect to see like a, uh, a white roof. So that is very cool. We've got the hood open on what I imagine is a 289. It's a 65 Mustang. I think that was, I don't know if the 302 came in them yet, but I know the, uh, the 289 was around for that. Um, very nice looking car. I like this color a lot. The sky blue with the white top looks fantastic. Um, so this is from the Thunderball movie. Uh, here comes the biggest bond of all. Hmm. Um, I probably have seen this many, many years ago. I'm not as into James Bond as I am, uh, Back to the Future. I've certainly seen Back to the Future quite a bit more. Um, but we do have some interesting facts to go along with our Mustang here. Uh, let's see if we can get them somewhere where you can read them. Uh, a Caribbean turquoise convertible Mustang driven by, driven by, what? Read this with me. A Caribbean turquoise convertible Mustang driven by, driven by the villainous Fiona Volp collects James, Bond's on, James Bond on a lone country road and drives him at high speeds back to Nassau. During the ride, Bond notices her specter ring. The very iconic 1965 Mustang belongs to the first generation of Ford Pony cars. Um, okay, so this is a bad guy's car. Or bad woman. The villain's car. What was her name? Fiona Volt. See, I, I'd like that name sounds familiar. I know I've seen this movie probably when I was a little kid, but very, very good looking Mustang. And yes, like they said on the box there, the first generation of Ford's pony cars. The one that started the pony car wars, although some will argue that the uh, the Barracuda started the pony car war. The 64 Barracuda and the 64 Mustang were the original competitors. Um, but everybody knows the Camaro is the best. So, <laughs> very cool. Take a quick look underneath here, and we will take, uh, let's see, 6 1 2022. Tell me round two. So, real quick, I did want to show you this card here. On the back, this is a relatively new one. So we've got uh, Pop Culture 22, release number three. Um, the Monsters Dragula, we're going to see that in just, oh, excuse me, just a second here. Uh, 51, 51 Hudson Hornet. Oh, God, I've got the hiccups. Hmm, okay, that's better. Um, a 51, uh, so we've got the Monsters Dragula, 51 Hudson Hornet, 70 Dodge Super B, 76 Dodge Van. I kind of want that Dodge Van. Uh, the 65 Mustang and the 1980 Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, and this is the previous release. That is the last James Bond car we saw, the uh, uh, Ford Country Squire there. Or, I'm sorry, it's a Ford Ranch Wagon. And then, uh, right, yeah, 1960 Ford Ranch Wagon. Um, right, there's 007. So, very cool stuff. That is our... Uh, I am a fan of the James Bond cars. There are a lot of cool cars in the James Bond stuff. They've released recently, they did a, a Lotus for him that I wasn't super crazy about, but um, either way. Anywho... Next up, we have the Munster's Dragula, and it's got Trivial Pursuit tires on the back, which is kind of lame, but oh well. Uh, still a really cool looking car, so let's crack this guy open. All right, here we go. So, I don't know, this isn't something that I would normally collect. It's a little cheesy and hokey, but at the same time, it is just so cool. I don't know, something about it just got me. 
So, uh, the monsters is a little before my time. Obviously, I know who the monsters are, Herman Monster and yada, yada, yada. But this, from what I've read, the origin story of this card has a couple different origin stories depending on if you go off the one in the movie or the one in the TV show. But in the TV show, what happens is... Uh, Herman Munster loses the Munster's coach in a drag race, and so the grandfather builds this to win the Munster's coach back, and I believe it said the episode was called Hot Rod Herman, so <laughs> pretty funny stuff. Really cool looking car, I'll tell you what, really, really cool car. I like that this little cockpit opens up, you can see inside the interior there, your little steering wheel and the purple seat inside the coffin or it's got a coffin for a body and then the little cockpit closes just an overall over the top crazy cool hot rod you know something you'd expect to see at a car show that somebody built in their garage just absolutely ridiculous dragula born 1367 died question mark <laughs> very cool um yeah, I absolutely love this thing. I was able to find a little bit of information about what that is going on in there. Um, so it says on Wikipedia, or according to Wikipedia, that is a 289, a 350 horsepower 289 V8 from a Ford Mustang um, with dual, dual carbs, and it had a pusher throttle. It had all kinds of goofy stuff, the big ridiculous headers on the side. Um... But yeah, it's a Mustang motor, a little 289 V8 in this thing. So that is pretty cool. I like the little fuel tank up at the front, the little lantern headlights. Every every little detail about this thing is just absolutely hilarious and cool. Very, very neat. We've seen these wheels before. Uh, the wheels on the actual uh, Dragula were a little different. But... Um, there's our tail light and parachute set up there. Rear axle's a little off center there. Let's whoop, scoot. There we go. That looks a little better. It says Dragula across the back window there. I believe uh, Rob Zombie has a song called Dragula. <laughs> Might be worth going to listen to. Very, very cool car. So, being that this is a Trivial Pursuit car, um, there we go, Trivial Pursuit, we got a little coin with the actual Barris Dragula, um, Barris Customs is the, uh, that's who built the, the car for the movie, if I'm not mistaken, 2022 Hasbro, huh. Ooh, don't drop it. Right, they have to have the Hasbro licensing, licensing for the uh, Trivial Pursuit. So, on here, we have our Trivial Pursuit questions. Now, last time we had one of these, I asked all the questions and told you guys to comment the answers. And I got like one answer because, I don't know, nobody knows how to make comments. Anyway... We're just going to read them off for you guys. It says, Antique lamps were installed, and to extend the gothic motif, what were used as exhaust pipes? Uh, Zumi-style organ pipes were used as exhaust. Who built a ex it should say, who built an exhibition replica of the Dragula, and where is it kept? Uh, it says... The Volo Auto Museum in Volo, Illinois. How many episodes was the Dragula used despite being shown in the end credits of every second season episode? Uh, there you go. One. It was only in one episode, and the name of that episode is Hot Rod Herman. Oh, here we look. In a famous episode to win back the coach, who built the Dragula Dragstrip Roadster? There you go. There's your answer. Grandpa. Um, with a T-bucket frame underneath and a 289 cubic inch Ford V8 engine, what was used for the body? A real coffin. <laughs> it's already, it's just telling you all the stuff I already told you. 
uh, and it says, what is on the fr uh, front of this famous Munster drag racing car? A marble gravestone. All right, so that is supposed to actually be a marble gravestone for Dragula there. So very interesting stuff, although I kind of wish I hadn't told you all the answers to the, uh, the Trivial Pursuit thing there. <laughs> I guess I probably should have read that card before I told you stuff about the car. Either way, a very cool addition to the collection. Now, once again, like I said, guys, my parking garages are all filled up. So we are going to do a little group photo here, like we've been doing. So we'll get the Mustang, Dragula, the Poopy Ford, the DeLoreans, everybody in for one last look. Um, can I zoom in on them individually? Uh, that's too close, sorry. Forget it. Um, but that is going to do it for today's video. We're only going to do six for today. I know that's a little bit shorter than the... Uh, well, I've been trying to bring the videos back down to under half an hour. So uh, keep your guys' attention span a little better. <laughs> but anyway, that is going to be our little movie series cars. Thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Let me know which car was your favorite. Oh, and by the way... Um, in reference to my last video, yes, we have finally hit 400 subscribers. I think we're actually at 401 now. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you who is subscribing, who is hitting the like button, leaving comments, you know, watching the videos, enjoying the content. I appreciate you guys to absolutely no end. You guys are the best. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.